hello there. I'm Missy Day, founder of What's Your Story, and welcome to our What's Your Story podcast. And with me is our special guest host. Hi, I'm Stacy Mulligan. I'm the special guest host. Are you happy? <laughs> I am so happy to be um, the Ed McMahon of the What's Your Story podcast today. I'm honored. You did well. She did well. So we've already done one show with Maria Vargo, and we're back with our second guest for today. The uh, rock star, amazing woman, Dina Barnes. Welcome, Dina, to the podcast. Thank you for having me today. So, how are things in Austin, Texas? They're a little, little hot, but it's, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, come to Vegas. I, I was just in Vegas like It'll two weeks ago. Melt your face off, but it wasn't 117 yeah. when you were here. <laughs> no, but it was pretty toasty. It was toasty. Yeah. So thank you for coming on the podcast today, first of all. So thank you for being here. And uh, so to tell you a little bit about Dina, she was um, a speaker for the first time last October for What's Your Story. And it's the very first time she ever shared her story on the What's Your Story stage. Well, anywhere, really, um, except in, in groups. So Dina... What's, what's been going on since you shared your story last October? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, it's, it's been a wild, <laughs> wild year. So when I did What's Your Story last year, I was kind of in the middle of changing jobs, not knowing what that looked like, and just had a lot of moving pieces in my life. And since then, um, I work with the Alumni Association. Oh, gosh, I am now doing events, open houses, you know, our company is just growing and growing and growing. And I have also done a radio commercial for the Meadows of Texas. I have also done a podcast for Recovery Replay with the Meadows Behavioral Health. The podcast, I have to say, is amazing. Um, like, wow. When I was listening to it, I was like, holy cow. <laughs> so when when does part two come out? Do you know? I don't know. I just heard the one, the um, cutting room floor, that said maybe at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. I'm not real sure. Okay. It's kind of this big, kind of big reveal, it seems like. A big reveal for the second part? Is it more Either than the that first or... part? Um, well, he left the first part <laughs> as me heading to Alaska. <laughs> which was the very dark part mm -hmm. and that was where things got really really rough so it's really intense well so what do, what can people that are coming to watch your story this october what can they and without giving like everything away so what can they expect to hear from you this year well this year we're gonna dig a lot deeper into my story Yay. and like the <laughs> like the podcast said it was uh unpacking recovery so we're gonna get down to where it all began the my childhood where my mom my just the whole family dynamic having kids and just the whole chaos that entailed with how i ended up in the smoke hut of princeton texas an alcoholic so Stacy was in the audience um, last. She spoke on Friday night. What would you say? <laughs> um, what was your biggest takeaway from Dina? Wow! First of all, I'm going to say that I can't believe that was the first time that you told that story in front of people. Um, kudos to you, <laughs> bringing us all in on your journey. Um, I would say that you know after I got past all the stuff. Although like, wow, <laughs> wow. I think that I definitely took, you know, you can fix it, it's fixable. Everything can be completely different if you think like that. Um, I mean, some of the things you said, I, I can't even actually relate to them, but I can certainly relate to, wow, everything's going straight downhill and how am I gonna get back up the hill? And, you know, you definitely did, so. I loved your talk. Dina. 
Uh oh. <laughs> can you hear well, us? Well, it froze on me. Oh. <laughs> it froze. <laughs> I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So this year, um, so, well, let's go back. So, what happened after October? When you're on the stage and shared your story, kind of like tell us a little bit about from that until now, all the things that have changed. Because you said a little bit, but you haven't really said what all you've been up to since then. Um, my whole entire life has completely changed. I, my job now, I am in such a supportive role that encourages me to be creative, to be me, to think outside the box. I do events, I'm able to be creative in getting people to, you know, those in recovery to really step outside their normal thinking process and start engaging in other activities that are conducive to recovery. And they're way outside of the box kind of activities. I mean, I can't say any more about the team that I work with Mm -hmm. that encouraged me to just be me and accept me for being me. And it's, it's such, it's been such a cool process. Was it what you expected after you spoke at what's your story where you're like, Oh, this is what's going to happen. No, 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 not at all. If you had told me this is what my life is going to look like in, you know, in a year, I would have said absolutely not. But five years ago, had you told me I would have been sober five years, I would have said absolutely not. I mean, this has been a lot of twists and turns and a lot of different variables involved in this. But I mean, I can't, I can honestly say that I am more comfortable in my skin now than I have ever been. Yay. That's awesome. So from, not from a speaker perspective, but from an attendee last year, what would you say, how would you describe what's your story, the event last year? It was life changing. I actually went home and started watching YouTube videos of a lot of the speakers. Um, a lot of videos, Gary Miracle, Dean Smith. Of course, I didn't watch my brother because I get him live and in person a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your takeaway from Dean Smith? <laughs> you know, so, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. What was your takeaway from Dean Smith? Amazing. He just, he is such an incredible speaker and just so moving. And the way it, he tells his story just is like, you know what? Forgiveness can happen if you just go in the right direction and do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel this year? that you are, so we've changed the format up. We've added a night before. So that event actually starts Friday night now and then um, all day Saturday. So you are gonna be kicking off the show Friday night. You're gonna have an activity. You're gonna be speaking. Um, you're gonna like be wowing everybody in attendance. So how do you feel about that role for this year? Let's go, let's do it. <laughs> You know, if at like-minded lunch last year, I had said when I had spoke that you can keep raising the bar and I'm going to keep meeting it. Mm -hmm. And this is where you raise the bar on me. So let's go. Let's do it. That's the thing I love about you the most, Dina, is you're like fearless and you're just like, just, you know, throw it at me and I'll do it. It's kind of like somebody else I know who might be sitting at the table. <laughs> <laughs> Hence, last minute co-host. Um, you know, don't threaten Missy to challenge you because she will. <laughs> don't don't say, and "Hey, what's it. next?" Because she's like, "Oh, well, here's what's next." Then, and she's like, <laughs> um, "But isn't it wonderful though to have somebody do that to you?" It really is. And Missy saw me a couple weeks ago for the first time since "What's Your Story," and I mean. It it's, was such a different dynamic of who I am now compared to who I was when she first met me in November of, what was it, 2021 mm -hmm. or 2020? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Night and day. And, and so when we were at the Ahern, so of course she comes out to do her story and then we find ourselves in the middle of a swingers convention. 
<laughs> at Ahern, so that was fun. <laughs> but uh, I told I told you, Dina, I was, I was like, oh my gosh, you, you look different, you act different, you sound different. And I'm just so proud of you for all the things that you've accomplished in, you know, not even a year. Thank you. Thank you. What you're getting is the real authentic me. And I, I have to give credit to the team that I work with. Um, I think the changing point with me happened in Vegas in January of there for an event at the um, Red Rock Casino. And, you know, I, as you've said, Missy, I can be very stoic and just kind of unemotional. And I usually keep a lot of things to myself. And I went up to the hotel room, it was not a problem. And I walked in and there was liquor everywhere in that room, everywhere. And I was like, oh no, because this is the first time I'd been really challenged with it just me, be, me being in there with a bunch of liquor. And I thought about it and you know, Aaliyah and Rochelle were, were down there waiting on me for dinner. And I went down there and I was just like, you know, I've got to say something. And I said, hey, I just want you guys to know that I was really triggered. There was a ton of alcohol in the room. And Aaliyah is like, oh my gosh, do we need to get rid of it? And I'm like, no. I said, my triggers are not y'all's responsibility. And that's when the turning point happened because I was able to trust them. And that just opened up all new doors for me. Mm -hmm. And I just went from there and no turning back. When you went home after what your story speaking there, cause, cause then you guys stayed for, to speak at like-minded lunch and then left, right? Yes. So when you went back, did anybody notice anything different for, with you? It was such a changing time of change for me, but I had more confidence in myself I was kind of, you know what, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. I started doing um, a lecture series out at the Meadows of Texas on Fridays, which that was kind of unexpected. And I created a whole rotation of lectures. Like I said, I just was a frozen. I think you froze, Dina. I'm still here. Okay. Hello. Yeah. You froze Hi, for a me. minute. <laughs> we couldn't hear you. Yeah. We missed what you said. Um, which part did you not hear? We don't know because we didn't hear it. <laughs> the... <laughs> oh, I didn't know. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just kidding. Uh, so uh, what changed after what's your story? Is that what we were talking about? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. I had more confidence in myself. I was able to stand taller. What's your story? I was in a room with other people that had, you know, their own stories. And it was a room full of people that just accept you for who you are. There's no judgment. And it doesn't matter how rough the story is. You just had a lot of like-minded people in there that have been through a lot of the similarities that you have. And it's really cool. Uh-oh, we lost her again. She's frozen. Wait. Frozen? Frozen. Well, there she is. Frozen. Okay, we got you, we got to that part and then you froze again. Okay, which part? Okay. Okay. Do so we need to start over on that one? <laughs> no. Let's not start over. We heard most of it. We got most okay. of it. Yeah, we got most of it this time. Okay. So what uh what are you personally looking for towards for this year's What's Your Story? What am I looking forward to? Yes. Um, I'm really looking forward to opening. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, Missy and I are not going to disclose anything of the opening, but I'm just looking forward to being around so many like-minded individuals that we're all striving to just be better people and just help the world. 
that it's okay to be to have your flaws. It, it's it's okay. Well said. Yeah. I think the thing that I um, that I want to always happen with what your story far goes beyond speakers. It's building the community that we have. You know, once people go or once people speak, then it becomes a, a tight community of people. And uh, we were just talking about this today earlier at our mastermind that it's really difficult to explain it. It's because it's unique and it's not something that's done. Well, I, I know of one, a story, a story thing that takes place, place in Nashville. But other than that, I don't know anything that's quite like our Witcher story. And I think that is the most important piece that we're unique. And, um, and like you said, just, you know, hearing from the speakers when they come, like Gary Miracle, who you think, you know, really, can, can you be inspired by someone else with your situation? And he said that was his favorite part, was listening and getting inspiration and hope from all the other speakers. And so I hope you felt the same for that. And I know that you, your story certainly delivered on that to a lot of people. I heard a lot of people give great feedback about your story. It's, it gives you new energy. It gives mm -hmm. you renewed energy once you leave there to continue on being a positive person. And I am really, really big on reframing the negative and turning it into a positive. Mm -hmm. Really good at it. I do, um, speaking of community, I actually do three virtual groups for the Meadows and community has really come up in the past couple of weeks of making sure your community is right. Yeah, that's so important. So last year, Stacy, you know, spoke at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and so this year that's she's on the main day. stage on Saturday. And so what are you looking forward to at, for what your story? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to getting up there and, and telling my story and not being so afraid. Um, I'll tell you what, telling the story I told, even though it was only five minutes long, um, in the bar with people <laughs> right behind me and people all around us and noise, um, that was, it, it's hard to say things like miscarriage in that kind of a public place. So, mm -hmm. but I've found that since I've said things like that, it's so much easier for me to say it and it makes it easier to forgive myself and just accept myself and just be able to be empowered to say the things. And I think I absolutely get that from everyone else too. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping to get up there and tell a good story that resonates with someone and that they leave with something and say, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing is that people can come to watch our story and not feel alone. They um, will hear something that'll resonate with them or they can relate either it's happened to them or somebody else. And I think in this uh, day and time, we're all looking for a little hope and inspiration, you know, to get us through each day. And so that's why, Dina, I think um, your story in particular can resonate with so many people because it's not just the alcohol piece. The alcohol piece was a result of something else. Mm -hmm. And that something else is what you're gonna talk about for this year. And that's the thing I think is, you know, people don't just end up in a really bad place. There's a lot that takes place before that. I always talk about it, it happens in layers. And so with you, I think that's the thing I, that I think I like the most about you since what your story, Dina, is, man, you've got a lot of layers. <laughs> <laughs> Did, are you there? Oh no. Oh no. Why do I feel like I should be singing Elsa? <laughs> <laughs> Frozen. <laughs> it's like that commercial, the cable commercial. Yeah. Frozen? Are you frozen? frozen? Dina? Anyone? Bueller? <laughs> That's not appropriate on this podcast. But. Well. <laughs> oh, oh, no. She back. <laughs> I hope so, too. So, how are things? Things are good. Good. They could be better. Good. 
looking forward to what your story and hearing more of uh, her layers. Right? Yes. I can't even imagine what else she's going to get up there and, and ha say. No, and, um, so she is taking the basic speaker training class this year. So we've been talking about our story. And so I told her, I said, I know that you just didn't wake up on the floor in Alaska one day. Right. You know, there had to be something else. Like, can we talk about the beforehand stuff? Right. So when she started sharing just little bits and pieces, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot of what? Yeah. And, and when then? her podcast came out, even like, you know, Jeff was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because people don't know. People don't know what you don't say out loud and most of the time we don't say those things out loud we say hi i'm stacy mulligan and right you know everything's honky dory mm -hmm. yeah um, oh, there she is oh we hear her yes we, i'm back we were talking about you we were saying nice things about you yes we I were couldn't think of a better conversation <laughs> 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 i can say that with great peace in my mind because i know that i'm not doing anything you know, I'm doing everything right. So I, you want to talk about me? That's good because I know it's not negative talk. So I'm good. No, we it were was talking not. about how um, this year, how I was blown away by your before the story, you know, happened talk. Um, but we were talking about layers and how you have so many layers to your story. And, um, and I just feel like even though you've talked a lot on the podcast and we've talked a lot with each other, that I just can't believe at this point that there's not more layers in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this has never happened before. So this, this is, is fun. New well, you know, fun. I'm I'm good at the improv, even though that's my <laughs> least favorite thing to be put on the spot and have to entertain or you know just not be like this. So, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just going to make an executive decision and we're just going to wrap this podcast up with um, thank you to Dina Barnes for um, sharing your story. We can look forward to seeing you in October. If you'd like to come to What's Your Story, you can check us out at www.whatsyourstory.vegas. And thank you, Stacy, for being my co-host today. Well, thank you for having me. It was great having you. And we will see you all later. Bye.